And welcome to the conversation, Boris Johnson, who's the Prime Minister and Conservative leader in these last few days as we get ready uh, for the general election. I understand you're trying to break a red wall, Prime Minister. What do you mean by that and why should people trust you to do so? Well, Nick, I don't know what you mean by, by, by breaking a red wall. All we're trying to do is campaign in every seat in the country and uh, we're trying to get a working majority in Parliament. The red wall of the north of because England. Aren't you determined to travel through there, Prime Minister? Well, of course, because we we want to uh, we were one nation conservative party. We want to we want to make our case everywhere in the country. And this is I'm up in in Grimsby, where people uh, 1,264 days ago voted to leave the EU. It still hasn't happened, and and they want to they want to get on with it. But more you know more importantly than, than that, they want progress in politics, and they they can't uh, they don't want uh, Corbyn and Sturgeon next year blocking things, uh, holding this country up again, and not just failing to get Brexit done, but failing to get anything done. Right. And we are, we've got a very dynamic agenda. We want to invest massively in the NHS. We already are massively in policing, in education, and in infrastructure. And right. here, in, here in Grimsby, it's just fantastic to see the, the opportunities that will come to this part of the world from, for instance, taking back control of our, of our fisheries. Uh, yes. Big, 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 big opportunities there. You, you, but there are also things we want to do with infrastructure, with renewable energy, yes, and, and you, much you, more besides. You talk about the health service. Clearly, it does need investment. I don't know if you're aware. You're not that far from Leeds, where a boy spent the night, four-year-old boy spent the night on a hospital floor because there I were know. no beds available. Well, and that, of course, has been in the, the NHS since 2010. The Conservatives have cut 15,000 hospital beds, Prime Minister. Well, we've also we've also put uh, seventeen thousand more nurses in, but we're, this is a new government with a new approach. Since I've come in, we're we're putting the biggest ever amount into the uh, NHS, uh, thirty four billion pounds, and we're going to hiring we're hiring fifty thousand more nurses. And you and I have been around those figures. We're going to be we're taking six thousand more GPs, and and of course we must address the issues in A and E, but it can only be done uh, once we've got things really motoring in uh, in Parliament, in government, and that means getting Brexit done. Well, what would you say to the mother or the family of this little lad uh, who spent four and a half hours on the hospital floor lying on and blankets? I, and I, of course, I sympathise very much, and I, you know, I apologise to everybody who has a bad experience. By and large, I think the NHS do an amazing job, and I, I, I think that uh, they deserve all, all praise for, for the service they provide, but they do need investment, Nick, and that's why we're doing it now. But they need investment from a one-nation government that really cares and understands, that's us, that cares and understands that you need long-term funding. And what you can't do is have uh, a, a, an economic disaster under Corbyn and uh, the Labour Party, or Back. Corbyn and Macdonald, who have, who have really okay. captured the Labour Party and have a very, very far left agenda and that will be deeply destructive to this uh, this economy. Plus, you'd have the political crisis of, of Corbyn in coalition uh, with Nicola Sturgeon and uh, unable, to, unable to get anything S done. S staying with the doomsday scenario, as you and your colleagues paint it as a, a, of a, a Labour victory or whatever it might be ne uh, later this week, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has talked about a violent crime wave, if Labour, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, would they'd lead to 52 more murders a year, 150 more sexual assaults, and 8,596 more weapons on our streets. How does she come by these figures? Well, uh, I think the, the answer, very simply, is that uh, you, you need on... Uh, to tackle crime, you need not just supporting the police by putting more police out on the street, which yeah. is what we're doing. But let me let me just try and answer the, the, the question. Yeah, because spe uh, spe specifically, the Daily Telegraph today, and it's just not the same since you moved into another post, page 18, but Priti Patel has filled the void yeah. today. And she writes, with those figures, 8,596 more offensive weapons, 882 more firearms, 150 more sexual assaults, 52 more murders. You're a journalist, I'm a journalist, where should you get those numbers from? Well, I'm sorry, I haven't been able. You, you must forgive me, Nick. I, well, I haven't been able. She's to made them the, up, the, Prime the, Minister, the, hasn't no, she? No, I, I, I'm, what Pretty is getting at is is the uh, the reality that unless you have a, a, a tough approach on law and order, unless you back the police, unless you're able to 
put more police out there in a consistent yeah. way and and give them the powers they need. And, and uh, you were talking earlier on your show about stop and search. Yes. Uh, you will find knife crime continues to uh, to be a problem. Uh, you, will, you will find that serious youth violence continues to be a problem and uh, that gun crime is a problem. Now, actually, if you if you look at what we can achieve in, in London, when you put the police out there in, in big enough numbers, you give them the political and I the legal you. backing they you. need to but do stop and search. But these figures are Project Then, then, then you can bring down these figures, the numbers. These figures I've quoted, 8,596 more weapons, 882 more. These are Project Fear. There's nothing to back up these figures and you've let them out on your watch as your Home Secretary. Well, uh, unless she's uh, mystic pretty, this is, makes no truth at all. <laughs> she's making a point about crime figures and the need to have robust policing, and I back that idea all the way. But with you nothing to, to have, back up those figures, you, it would you need. To, well, my experience is that if you give the police the uh, the support that they need, and if you give the police right. uh, the the numbers that they need, you will get crime down. And uh, but it's all. It, it's not just about policing. We all know, Nick. It, it's about the the kind of type of society you have, your attitude to society, what you uh, what you do. And to engage young people and and to change their lives, right. and that's why that's why we're also investing in youth centres. A uh, huge amount of, of money going in uh, to sort of grassroots sport. You saw um, massive investment uh, Let, we announced yesterday. We want to change kids' lives as well okay. as being tough on on law and order. As you're in the north, I'm sure you've also been made aware of the views of Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham, who says there's no need to build the third runway at Heathrow. Keep the money going into HS2. Is the mayor of Manchester? Mayor correct? Well, uh, the, the issue is, uh, there are several issues there. On, on, on Heathrow, as you know, it's a private sector project, which is uh, still yet, yet to satisfy its strict legal ob obligations on air quality and, and noise pollution. On, on HS2, we've got a, a review going on to, to look at the, whether the money could be better spent and uh, that's not to say I want to stress that's not to say that uh, I am temperamentally hostile to big infrastructure projects well, are you I'm for not, it? But I think I, I, I think that the issue for anybody looking at HS2 is if and we're a new administration if you're coming in uh, with a uh, a project that's north of 100 billion probably uh, you've got to ask yourself it's only responsible to the taxpayer to ask whether it's being uh, sensibly spent and, and whether that funding is being Prioritize right. Well, is it? I, it's, I wonder. It's, 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 I, Prime Minister, it's, it's, you, you've you know, just could you spend? Me. Could you spend it? Yes. Could you spend it I, more sensibly? I have the, the budget north? for the HS2 at eighty-eight billion pounds. You've just said it's north of one hundred billion pounds. So we've just added another thirteen billion as a stroke. Have we? Well, Let's cancel well, this white it, elephant, it, shall we? It, it well, it could come in at. Uh, I think probably in looking at looking at the way these things go, it probably will come in north of one hundred. But you know, at the moment, you're right. It's eighty-eight, and uh, there, are, there. Are, that's a lot of money. And there, is, there will be serious questions about whether that is that is the right, the the, the right whether the question the question is are but we why the sudden in fifteen the right percent order? hike? We've just added fifteen percent in the per duration of this conversation to the cost of HS two. Where's that extra money <laughs> coming? What's it going to be spent on? No, it's, a, it's a figure I've used many times in the past. But, but, but where you've made it up, haven't you? No, I think that if you look at, if you look at the uh, the. A project like HS2, which will will stretch on for for decades, you look at its current uh, budget. It, it it will probably uh, be very expensive. I think it will probably come in at more than 100 billion. That's my that's my that's my guess. You're you're right that it's it's currently budgeted for 88 billion. That is still an awful lot of money, and we need to make sure that it is properly spent. Uh, and just coming back last year, the other aspect of this uh, regarding Heathrow, are you still planning to lie down in front of the bulldozers? Well, Nick, I don't see so any much sign of any bulldozers yet. Uh, no, but if, if you're a man who says you can deliver on promises, were the bulldozers to appear, would you lie down in front of them? I, I would have to find some way of honouring that promise. I have to. It, 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 it might be technically difficult to achieve, but uh, yes, I mean. The, but the, as I said, the issue so you with would these, still you will find a technical issue, way to lie down in front the of the bulldozers with, if the work starts you, on the third one way. Let's let's wait and see when the bulldozers arrive, because the issue the issue with Heathrow, as you know, is that uh, there is still substantial doubt about the ability of the promoters to meet their obligations on uh, air quality and 
noise pollution. But, uh, but as you know, Parliament has voted very substantially in favour of that, of that project. So that, that's where we are on Heathrow. And lastly, The Guardian reports that voters are confused over your Australian-style immigration proposals. They've not set out clearly what you are trying to achieve. What are you trying to achieve with this system? We're trying, to give it, we're trying to give democratic control to the people of this country after decades of uncontrolled and unlimited immigration. And that is what it is all about. And yes, it will mean that for the purposes of unskilled immigration by people who have no job uh, to come to, uh, who are just you know, coming into the UK uh, without any, any uh, economic, any, any job to come to, there will be a reduction in numbers and we will bring immigration down. And to what number? I can't give you a number, Nick, and I'm not going to get into a numbers game, but our intention is to bring them down. I'm grateful for your time. Prime Minister Boris Johnson.